Jen Mallon, welcome to Come Home. It's going to be a great day in the living room for you today. So grab your yummy beverage, whatever that may be. If it's early morning, it could be coffee or tea. If it's late at night, it could be sleepy time tea, or it could be a ginger ale or juice or whatever you enjoy. But there's just something in, in my world so comforting about a cup um, filled with liquid love and sitting down with friends and talking about our best friend, our holy friend, Jesus. So that is what we're going to do today. And, oh my goodness, there is a firecracker woman of God that is here today. You know, Margot Holmes had a very difficult childhood and didn't know how she was going to overcome it, but a trip to vacation Bible school and a scripture, John 3, 16, revolutionized her little girl heart. And now, fast forward, she has written almost 80 books. Many of them are directed to children, about children, empowering, equipping, and helping children. And they came and were birthed from a question that her granddaughter asked her on the Easter morning while taking communion. That reminds me of Isaiah 11:6 that says, and a little child shall lead them. And so, so often children uh, are the voice of God, the heart of God to frame what's next in our adventure and journey in the kingdom. So we're going to hear her story. We're going to hear about these beautiful resources. She and her husband, Bill, uh, have been married for almost four decades. They have six children, 15 grandchildren, and four greats. And so she is an expert on littles and children and a big family. And you are just going to absolutely love her. So would you share this with a friend? Uh, if you have a DVR, DVR it. If you're watching on On Demand, you can send that On Demand show to others, but you will be blessed. Listen, there's no excuses in the kingdom. You are not too old. You are not too fat. You are not too young. You are not too poor. You are not too rich. You are not too anything because God is with you and God is for you. And Margot is going to so inspire you. And so we are now going to an incredible, let me get this right, Shior Lachaim. And it is Shuva Shalom. It's a great thing that's upcoming and a part of Come Home. So take a look. Welcome to Shuva Shalom with Come Home for a Shior Lachaim, a life hack that will be a great bracha, a blessing for you and your mishpacha, your family. Ani Elisheva ve Ani Rotsa Lechagid Lach Mashu Miragish Im Hatora ve Habrit Hadasha. As Christians, when we speak about the Shabbat or the Sabbath or the Holy Days, many people, even believers, are under the impression this is no longer observed or has been done away with somehow after the death and resurrection of our Mashiach, Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. But it's important to bring Jew and Gentile together to celebrate the Holy Days and the Shabbat as one in Messiah. Thousands of years ago, the people of Israel longed for a temple and a place to worship, the promised land that Almighty God destined for them. The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, and even Moses spoke of this land where they would be free one day. But there have been painful battles and hard-fought wars. And to this day, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel, who finally was restored as a nation with the victorious hand of God forever upon them. And one day they will recognize their long-awaited Messiah, who stretched out his arms and carried their burdens, and all of their feast days and all of their Sabbaths point to him. God has set up these appointments in scripture so that we can know him better and know his plan of salvation. And by God's Holy Spirit, we pray Messiah be revealed to all of Israel through the feast and through his word.
For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. First for the Jew, and also to the world. We believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, so we worship the Lord. On the Feast of Passover, Jesus is our Passover Lamb. On the Feast of Trumpets, He's our soon coming King. On Hanukkah, He is the light of the world. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God of the universe. Come, let us worship Him. Let all of Israel worship Him. Well, today we have a great grandmother on fire. She is Margot Holmes, and she was just an ordinary grandmother who got encouraged and uh, motivated by a granddaughter and developed a passion, heard the vision of God, and began to write books to help children get grounded in the truth of God's word and who Jesus is. And to the CTN audience, you may have seen her before on previous programs, but she's new to me. And when she sent me the box of goodies, uh, I immediately began reading them with my grandsons. And so I have had the joy of experiencing her literary work firsthand. Margo, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Yay, you drove and you're here and yes. you have so much joy. I love it. I have a lot of reasons to be full well, of joy. Tell us some of them because you had a very challenging childhood. I did. And it's just a perfect example of how God will protect us and keep us and how he has a plan for us and he plans to prosper us and to give us hope and a future. And I'm now in part of my future, Absolutely. <laughs> but not, you know, never having any idea then. But one of the reasons the books are so important to me is because I was taken to a vacation Bible school when I was about seven. Someone just picked me up out of the yard and took me and I knew nothing about Jesus. So they gave me John 3, 16 to <laughs> recite at the end of the program. And as I was reciting it, because I was so terrified that I would forget the words, and I, was, I remember walking down the stairs, and as I was reciting, for God so loved the world, I saw Jesus on the cross wow. as I saw him. And I knew in my heart that he loved me. I knew that. And I had that in my heart. But there was so much more that I needed. There was so much more that I want children to know now. I didn't know that he could be my best friend. Yeah. I didn't know that he had all power over the enemy. I didn't know, you know, that so many things that... He could, uh, I could just go to him and get wisdom and just so many things that children need and that we need as young adults. That's and right. my choices would have been so much different. My whole countenance would have been different because I was so terrified and shy all the time living in this. My parents were reported for child abuse. Aww. And I did end up, you know, in a children's home with foster parents and all. And so much of that would have been different, maybe not the circumstance, but how I, how I went through it less terrified, right. you know, l knowing that I was loved and knowing that God would bring me into a future and a hope. Yeah. Well, I do want, because I know today we're focusing on the children's books and the, the nine that are in the God's Great Love series, uh, even the new one that is hot off the press. <laughs> but I do want to encourage viewers to go to margoholmes.com because uh, she has books um, that tell about her story. This is, has a lot of wisdom and great, great stories. It's my heart. Uh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then this one is about um, some of the tumultuous things that you went through as a child and um, really difficult, difficult, challenging things. And, and yet you overcame them because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've recon you reconciled with your family and your mother. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage viewers, great, these are quick reads, but they're powerful and they're potent and they 
give, give you a glimpse into um, her heart and her struggle and everything that she has had to overcome. Uh, and you know, our, our tests and our trials uh, produce great works. And so through everything that you overcame, you know, through being a single mom, uh, through meeting your husband 37 years ago and you uh, becoming a blended family, uh, through your bonus daughter, yeah. and all, just look at all the gifts that God has given you. But through all of those experiences, now this beautiful series is birthed. And, and it's a game changer. It's really a game changer. I wanted so much when I did them to, to do them in a way that if a child knew nothing, yeah. nothing, because that's where I was. And so many children are today. And, and so many parents even don't. I've had men tell me, I never understood communion until I read your book for children. And now I understand. They go up and they take communion, but they have no idea what they're really doing. Yeah. And so it, it helps not just the children. It helps the parents, but it helps the the parents and the children grow in the Lord together and grow in His Word. But I didn't want them to be like comic books. Um, and I didn't want them to be commentaries of what I thought. Yeah. I want them to be absolutely true to the Word of God and nothing else. And to just stick with that because that will not return void. Never. And you've done such a great job. One of the Thank ones you. I love, and I, I brought it, <laughs> is... Um, the book that you did on the Holy Spirit, because, you know, so often we think or sometimes parents think they, they shy away from introducing children to the power of the Holy Spirit. They introduce them to Jesus. They introduce them to Father, Abba, but not the Holy Spirit. And, you know, Margaret, there's not a junior Holy Spirit. It's one Holy Spirit, uh, that same Holy Spirit that illuminated your little mind. And as you were quoting John 3, 16, you saw him. Mm -hmm. And so this one, this one is one of my favorite. Yeah. And I'm especially too, because um, the, the thing we have to remember is if our children receive the Holy Spirit, understand, let me just read this really quick here. Do. Um, no man has seen, heard, or even imagined in his heart the wonderful things God has made ready for those who love him. No one can know God's thoughts or fully understand or appreciate his gifts unless they are revealed to them by his Holy Spirit. The good news is that when you accept Jesus into your heart, God puts his spirit in you and his spirit begins teaching you what is in the mind of Christ. And if children will just understand, they, they, can they have, when they receive Jesus, they have received a part of the Godhead. They have received the Holy Spirit. And then they just need to, that needs to be cultivated. They need to surrender to that. They need to be led by that. And what a difference it would make in our children if they're led by the Holy Spirit, if they can depend on, and actually I just wrote another one called the nine gifts of the Spirit. <gasps> Ooh. Yes, <laughs> because it will change their lives. So it will change everything. You've written almost 80 books. Mm -hmm. so 81 actually, uh, 78 children's and four adult, but I'm, Margo, so anxious to do just, more. You're just like a multiple <laughs> birther. That is amazing. I can't seem to stop. When I first started, I just did the one book for my granddaughter because I wanted her to understand the Holy Spirit. And then I, I, got, I was finished with that. And early in the morning, I listen when I pray. I listen a lot. And I just heard the, the Lord would just drop the next one into my spirit. It would be like, why be baptized? Oh, Yeah. You know, just before before we even take communion, we need to be baptized. We need we need salvation. You know, um, and so every time it would be, and then I would thought, well, there's the uh, everyone repeats the Lord's prayer. We all do, and children repeat. That's one of the first things they that people let them even pray. Right. And yet they don't understand the power behind the words. And I thought they need to understand what they're praying when they pray the Lord's prayer. So one just as, as soon as I would finish one. Then it would be like another one. Every time I think, okay, that's it. There's 20, there's 25, you know. And then they would just drop another subject. You know, I love the one, um, too, that, of course, that I'm talking about teach us to pray. Yes. And what my daughter convinced me to do was, at first I was just doing books for the seven, to, like 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, really, and adults, a lot of them. And I use them a lot when I ministered at assist, assisted living facilities. Aww. But um, she said, Mama, you've got to do them for the younger ones because 
my grandchildren are between eight and 33 right now. Okay. But anyway, so, but you know, it's really more difficult to write for the younger because if you're going to uh, present a theory, a God, a principle, a God principle, and not do it in a um, silly way, um, but do it according to the word, it's, it's really challenging yes. for, the, for the smaller ones. But it's, um, it's, it's just such a joy. And I just, like I say, every time I think I'm finished, God just drops another one into my spirit, another something that they need to understand, yeah. another, like the four friends who took their friend up on the rooftop and tore it open. You know, children need to learn how to be a friend, right. to love them enough to take them to Jesus. Yeah. Margo, you, there's so many, many adults have never gotten this training. And Jesus is very clear that we're to have childlike faith. And I really appreciate that you encourage adults to read them too. Because just like you and your husband pastored for many years, my husband and I pastored for many years. And there were adults that got born again and they said, I don't know anything. And I would say, go get a children's Bible. And <laughs> they thought that was silly. And then they came back a year later and said, it was exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. And so it's wonderful. And, and it, God loves multi-generational faith, multi-generational blessings. And so even to have parents that go through this with their children. Yes. It's beautiful. And in the assisted living facility where so many of them just need Yeah, the and word. so many have been to church all their lives. Yeah. But they never really understood what was going on. They would hear a message and they'd just go home and that would be it, you know, but especially the, because the first series starts with salvation and ends with Jesus is coming again. Yeah. And how many children are looking for Jesus to come again? So in the Jesus is coming again, I explain to the children that when he comes, he's coming with rewards. Ooh, yes. And they, I, love rewards. <laughs> they love rewards. They love rewards. You know, and so I have, I have the, uh, the one page that has the illustrations are so good mm -hmm. with my books. And so. Um, but I have the crowns where they know that they're going to be crowned for these things. But I also go over uh, what Jesus is going to be looking for when he comes. You know, will he find faith? But I go over chapter 25 in Matthew where he talks about that we're to clothe the hungry, give a, a, a drink to the thirsty, um, be, be kind to the, to the lonely, visit those who are in prison, pray for those who are sick. Because that's what, Je that's what he's going to reward. Yes. And he's coming again. It's real. Yes. Yes, and you're and, teaching them Jesus-style ministry and Jesus-style faith while their hearts are still young and pliable. And why they can make good decisions. Yeah. Why they can know that they can pray for wisdom and receive it. That God's just ready to give it to them. Yeah. You know, why they can have discerning of spirits that they can know if someone is to be trusted or not to be trusted. You know, just, just so much that they need to understand that it will change this world now. This world needs change now. That's right. We're, we're, we're not just talking about future generation. We're talking about the now yes. generation and what is going on right now that affects you and me. Yes. It's affecting yes. us what's going on now. That, and so it's so important that we right now teach each other. If they're not told the truth, they will believe a lie. You're right. We need the truth in them from this this big, you know, as soon as you can just hold them in their, in their lap and yeah. read to them. Because even the little ones, if they can't read the book yet, they listen. Yeah. My little two-year-old, which she's just turned three, actually great-granddaughter, was so funny because one, one day a box of the books arrived from the printer. And it, we, it was just in a brown box and we hadn't said a word to her. But when my husband took the book out, she looked at it and she said, Oh, it's a God book. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. Yes. Isn't so, it amazing a two-year-old can yes. discern that? Yes. Time to start. You're right. But never too late. Yeah. Margo, I, I just prophesy these books are going to go into every public school uh, library in the state of Florida. They are going to go into homeschool curriculums. They're going to go into private school curriculums. They're going to go into all mainstream bookstores. These are so needed. And the Lord has raised you up for such a time as this. And I know you paid a, a, a price for five years just writing and writing and writing. And you probably thought, when, Lord, what, Lord, how, Lord? And yet you obeyed. And I just really sense that there's something so special 
and so unique. And, and I just encourage, if you're watching, don't buy another toy for your grandchildren or for your next door neighbor. Order these books. Uh, you, you know, readers are leaders, leaders are readers, and we have to study to show ourselves approved. And our children are in trouble. The enemy is after them. All you have to do is turn on the news, scroll through social media. The enemy is after us, yes, but he's after them. He is going after them, and we've got to stop and block his attempts. And this is a way that you can use spiritual warfare to protect the next generation, those in your neighborhood and those that you love. And so I'm just, uh, I am just raising a clarion call to all educators. This, these books are quality and excellence. The illustrations are incredible and they're simple, but they're deep and they're profound. And so I just, I just want to encourage you, uh, keep on going, keep on going and expect for God to open supernatural doors, Marco. I, w I want him, I want him to do it for the children. Yes, I, I want him to do it for the children. This is my latest one. This is actually a proof that just came from the printer that I'm so excited about. <laughs> Tell us about and, it. And well, the, the little granddaughter that inspired that I start the whole thing. Yeah. This is, this is my granddaughter. She's 12 and she's, and actually, I use her as my proofreader. Okay. <laughs> I do. I try my books out on my my, my younger ones uh, because they can let me know if the language is good. I want the language to be so that they process it with their heart. Yeah. I want them to um, have it in their minds and in their hearts, and not just something that they read. So I don't want them stumbling over what they're you know trying to understand what they're reading, but so that it flows. But this one, I was so inspired and so. I actually was almost talked out of this book because I told someone about it and they said, oh, children won't, you know, they won't be interested in that. I'm like, and so my, but my granddaughter <laughs> said, she? Grammy, she said, Grammy, you have to do it. You have to do it. So I had her proof it, but it's called Promises, Prayers, and Proclamations Ooh. because our children, you know, they, they learn, you know, you hear little ditties, you hear songs or phrases like, you know see the hand, you know, or whatever, yeah. you know, saying talk things the that they hand. would talk to the hand. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> and, um, and so I wanted for them to have a proclamation yeah. for, uh, I did 30 days. Oh. I want to do another one because I just love it so much, but I wanted to do one that every day they would have a scripture, which would incorporate a biblical principle, simple biblical principle. They wouldn't need to you know the whole Bible to do it, yeah. but just that biblical principle and then that I, I also put a prayer with it a very simple short prayer that they can pray so that they can process it into their hearts but it has the proclamation I'll just do one here real do quick it, do it. and this is the, the illustration for it it's a young man praying but this is called I will love my enemies amen amen that's the proclamation that's a good I will love my enemies because we all have enemies. <laughs> Amen. Even children. But we're to love them. Yes. And so the scripture is, but to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, help me to care about and be good to everyone, even those who have hurt me. Keep my heart so full of forgiveness that I have no room for grudges. Help me to bless my enemies and pray for them to accept you as their savior. Help me to remember how important it is for me to show others your great love. Wow. And so that's just something simple that they can do each day and they have that principle in their heart. They have that prayer that they can process it and they have that proclamation. When they go out the door to school that day, I will bless my enemies. Amen. <laughs> they, and they, you can keep that in the car. You can do it in yes. car line. You can do it at a red light. Yes. You know, or your child could put it in their backpack. And when they're having a recess or a break, you know, they can do that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, the, the way that these books can be used, it's unlimited and, it, and it's timely. Margo, before we uh, close the program today, I want you to pray. Whether you pray for grandparents or parents or children, I just want you to release the heart of God to those that are, that are watching today. Father, we thank you. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this open door. And Father, I pray that you will open hearts, that you will open the hearts of the parents, the grandparents, the teachers, Lord, um, the, 
the aunts and the uncles, Lord, that you will just open up their hearts to see how vital this is and how important it is in this day, how we can help the children, and Lord, how we can introduce the truth so that when they're faced with other noises from the world, Lord, that they will not believe those things that they hear that are not the truth. Father, we want to fill their hearts and their minds and their lives with the truth, the truth of God's love, the truth of God's holiness, the truth of God's goodness, and the truth of God's power, that he has power not only in heaven, but in earth, and that they can have a life today that's abundant and peaceful, full of joy. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Amen. Margo, Amen. thank you. Thank you thank for you. Um, this labor of love. Uh, thank, thanks to you and Bill for saying yes, because you know <laughs> you have to have a husband that says, okay, sweetheart, you can do this. I believe in you. <laughs> yes. And to your family, you know, they I know have been your test market and your grandchildren. Uh, it's been quite an undertaking, but it's beautiful. And I just sense you've got a lot more books in you, um, not for the sake of the books, right. but for the sake of bringing the presence of God, bringing a move of God, bringing a movement among children and revival. And you know, our children are not doomed. God selected for them to live in this time in history, but they need to be empowered. They need to be prayed for. They need to be equipped. And, um, mm. and they need those that are older and wiser to help them. And so we can do that. This is a, a way that we can love our children and love our nieces and nephews and anyone in our life by getting these books and then going through it with them. And so I want you to go to margoholmes.com and I want you to look at all the resources. You can reach out to her. She's a delight. Don't you love her? And I know she'll answer you. And thank you for being on the program. And as yeah. more come out, you need to come yes. back and, and <laughs> share them. And, and I, we'll have a panel of children one day, oh, and you can bring the that. grandchildren, and I'll bring Matthew. I was going to have Matthew, my grandson, do a book review today, but we couldn't coordinate it because he, we have been reading these to him. And um, so thank you so much. And listen, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he, he's right there. It's a matter of you just saying, Jesus, come into my heart. I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for paying the ultimate price, giving your life on the cross for me. Thank you for loving me, according to John 3, 16. Holy Spirit, empower me. Forgive me for all sin and not my will, but yours be done. That's as simple as it is. You pray that prayer. You are saved. You are going to heaven. Now you need to get discipled. Uh, continue to watch Come Home with Jen Mallon. We bring you guests that will help you in your journey. Thank you so much.